Now, I wanted to kind of go into the energy utilization um, uh, as, as, as a, a next process. We, we kind of alluded to that a bit as far as lactate is concerned. But as far as energy usage and utilization and efficiency, what's the most optimal uh, source of energy for a brain? And even I, I completely recognize the overgeneralization of that statement, but we can actually break that down into a little more a nuance. But from your perspective, what's the optimal? Uh, well, the, it's, there's no debate about that. I think glucose is by far the single most important molecule that the brain needs. Uh, and uh, you've got all these homeostatic mechanisms to make sure that the brain is getting glucose, including insulin resistance. Uh, so people get, ins when they get insulin resistance uh, during acute exercise, for example, if you, if you acutely take your bike or run, uh, your muscle tissues will become insulin resistant. Uh, that's opposed to chronic exercise where you become insulin sensitive. The part of the reason the physiology goes to insulin resistance is to provide a hyperglycemic state to keep the brain going at times of fasting. So, so glucose, and, and that's exactly why insulin does not regulate glucose delivery across the blood-brain barrier. So when tissues like the muscle or the adipose tissue or the liver are now failing to respond to insulin, this is shuttling glucose into the brain to keep the brain going. Now, that system breaks, and when that breaks, even without disease, when you deplete all of your glycogen, uh, let's say you did 100 miles of biking, and then you, know, you're, you don't have glucose anymore, the, the system shifts to ketosis, and you start breaking down fatty acids, and the, the brain can use ketone bodies uh, as opposed to, to sugar as a source of energy uh, to keep it going and to maintain its homeostatic. Uh, disease uh, homeostatic mechanisms. 